Welcome to section 5.8. We are going to talk about analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. In our essential question, when you are analyzing the graph of a polynomial function, what are the essential characters to list? Uh, what do you need to make sure you keep in mind as you are analyzing? So, a couple of new words for us. We are going to talk about what's called a local maximum and a local minimum. Just quickly to review, if you're talking about zeros, you're talking about the x-intercepts, and we'll either be able to see those based on the equation that we were given or from where these graphs cross the x-axis. A local maximum. Picture you are taking a quick little area picture of something like this. See how I'm focused in on just one specific portion of the graph. The local maximum would be the turning point of this graph where it goes from positive to negative. The local minimum, you're doing the same thing. You're focusing in on just one specific section of your polynomial graph and you want to list the lowest point possible. It's where it's turning this time, going from negative to positive. So a local maximum is always focused on going from, as x is increasing or as x is approaching infinity, you want to focus on where your graph is the highest point and where it is turning from increasing to decreasing. And then with the local minimum, again, as your x value is increasing, um, you want to focus on where your points are decreasing to the point where they stop decreasing and then start increasing. And we call these local maximums and local minimums because if you look at the end behavior of this graph, you can see that it will go on towards, as x is approaching negative infinity, our graph will also approach negative infinity. And as x is approaching positive infinity, our graph is also approaching positive infinity. So we call them local maximums and local minimums because they're not the highest or the lowest point that this graph will reach, but in their specific region. Like when I dragged the box over those two areas, they are the, low, um, the, the smallest or the, the lowest and the highest points of those two regions. So let's look at an example. Our job is to identify the x-intercepts and the points where the local maximum and local minimums occur. It says it right here in the question, use the graphing calculator. And yes, you need to use your graphing calculator for this question. First thing we want to look at, where are the x-intercepts? This polynomial function is already written in factored form, so we can look just at the equation itself and figure out where the zeros are. Again, these are the factors, these are not the zeros. So to find the zero, you just change the sign of whatever's in the factor. So I'm just gonna start by drawing some points on a graph or some, some lines, I'm setting up a scale. The 0.25, that more just gives us information about what the shape of our graph is going to look like. So I'm going to look here at x plus 2. Again, change the sign, so that means we have a 0 at negative 2. So I'm going to plot a point at negative 2, point zero negative 2. We also have um, x minus 1 as a factor. So change the sign of negative 1, we have positive 1. And then we have another 0 at 3. Okay, and then recall when we were talking about n behavior, this is going to end up being a degree 3 polynomial because if we multiply three binomials together, we should be getting a trinomial. And our lead coefficient is positive, so that means that as x is approaching negative infinity, f of x is also approaching negative infinity. And as x is approaching positive infinity, or just infinity, f of x 
is also approaching positive infinity. So basically it's going to start something like this. It will come up, it will turn a couple of times, and be heading in the positive infinity direction at the end. Now before that was good enough just to kind of introduce the topic, but we have a way to actually find what the local maximum, what the local minimum are. So I'm going to pull up your graphing calculator. You want to type the equation into your calculator. y equals 0.25 times x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3, and then you can hit graph. So yes, we can still kind of estimate where those points are, and yep, it matches everything we just talked about. We have an x-intercept at 0, negative, or negative 2, 0, at 1, 0, and at 3, 0. It started off coming up. The graph started coming toward negative 2, reached a local maximum, turned at a local minimum, and then approached positive infinity. We do have a way to calculate the exact value. So if you click the second button and then calculate, we have the option to calculate um, a specific value of x. We can calculate the zeros. We also have the option to calculate minimum and maximum. And that's what we want to do here. So just working left to right, I see we have a local maximum first. So I'm going to select option 4. And I want to come all the way over to our local maximum. The very first message that we get is left bound. So you want to be close to the maximum, but just a little bit to the left of the maximum. And then you can hit enter. After you hit enter, the next choice that you get is right bound. So you want to this time go past the maximum, and I'm going to watch the y value. 1.96, 2.03, 2.05, 2 2.01. So now I can see that I've started decreasing. So I'm going to hit enter again. The next choice you get is the word guess, so you need to hit enter for a third time. And it gave us a maximum x equals negative 0.786, y equals 2.05. So we can estimate that the maximum is about negative 0.8, and the, or sorry, the coordinates would be about negative 0.82. We can go ahead and plot that point. And then let's try for the local minimum. So again, pull up the graphing calculator. You can hit second and then it's the, it says trace, but in blue is what you're actually doing when you hit second. So second calc, look for the minimum value. And again, we always start with the left bound, so get as close to the minimum as you can on the left-hand side. So I can see y is still decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Okay, so I'm going to go right about here. And then I want to watch for y to start increasing again, which it just has. Guess? And we have about the coordinate 2.1 and negative 1. Sorry, 2.1 and negative 1. And then you can plot that point. And now that we, in addition um, to the x-intercepts, the local maximum and minimum, we can calculate the y-intercept as well. If you go to second calc, you can choose the option to calculate a value. And if you select when x equals 0, it will estimate a value for y, which is 1.5. So 
when x is 0, y is 1.5, that's our y-intercept. So one more bit of information for our graph is 0, 1.5. And now using all six of those points that we plotted, we can get a pretty reasonable guess for what our graph should look like. We are going to come up until we reach the local maximum, turn around, keep decreasing until we reach the local minimum, turn around, and then increase. Okay, so for this first example, I went pretty slow because I wanted to talk you through exactly what you needed to do on your calculator. For the next couple of examples, I'll go a little bit quicker.